Welcome to another Microsoft Access 2010 tutorial. This is an intermediate tutorial just showing um, a little bit more in depth on tables and relationships for Microsoft Access database and pretty much any relational database that uses um, different sets of tables to connect through relationships. In our beginning video of the basics we discussed uh, the three different relationships very briefly and didn't go into great detail. So first we're going to show um, a lot more in-depth relationship and set of tables in a database. This is a much larger database um, that can be built. This is basically the outline of a very large company, uh, both revenue cycle and uh, sales cycle. Uh, they have both our revenue cycle and purchasing cycle. So there's a lot of information in this table and a lot of independent information. Uh, as you can see, there's everything here for inventory and sales. And then over here, we have everything from purchasing to disbursements. We have different things set in place for customers, keeping records of customers, their credit rating, zip codes, and there's a lot of different lines going through here, but each one of these lines is connected to a relationship. As you can tell, this is a one-to-many relationship, and we have a few one-to-one -one relationships in here. This is basically what a large database for a large business would look like depending on how much information you're wanting to store it could be bigger than this so what is so important about the relationships of uh, different tables so first we have to look at the definitions of these to actually understand what is so important about them these are the Microsoft definitions for Microsoft Access 2010 for each one of the relationships. Um, a one-to-many relationship is more of a relationship based on one unit and one table being connected to many in a different table, as we discussed in our basics video. Uh, it says consider an order tracking database that includes a customer's table and an order's table. We have both of those in the table that we're using. A customer can place any number of orders. It follows that for an any customer represented in the customer's table, there can be many orders represented in the orders table. So one customer might have 10 orders. So that one customer is tied to 10 orders, but one order isn't tied to more than one customer. This would be an example of one-to-many relationship. Um, feel free to pause this and read through the rest of the definition. Uh, for time reasons, I'm not going to read through the rest of it. Uh, many to many relationships. Um, so this consider the relationship between a products table and an orders table. A single order can include more than one product. On the other hand, a single product can appear on many orders. So that's a good example of two tables that can have a very large relationship between each other. So that would be considered a many to many relationship. And what is so important is you don't want to label a many to many relationship a one to many relationship. Or whenever you go to run queries and reports or to extract data from your relational database, you're not going to get the proper information to be pulled out of the database. There's going to be gaps in the information. A one-to-one -one relationship, uh, according to Microsoft, is a uh, each record in the first table can only have one matching record in the second table, and each record in the second table can only have one matching record in the first table. This type of relationship is not common because most often the information related in this way is stored in the same table. You might use a one-to-one -one relationship to divide a table with many fields to isolate part of a table for security purposes. This, as I say, is not used a lot, but there's not a lot of reasons to use this table. Um, I haven't used too many in the past. I think the current database has one in it somewhere. Uh, but it all depends again on the information that you're using. So our actual database here has just about every function of a business 
that can be used as far as purchasing and sales. Um, we can look at a one-to-many relationship has a customer is only going to live in one zip code. But we may have a zip code with more than one customer. So one zip code could have half of our customers in it, depending on how how big of a region that we cover with our business. Um, but this is this is basically how it would need to be set up. There's not a whole lot more that can be said on relationships and on the different tables and how they could be set up. This is just kind of an overview, a little bit more of an intermediate overview of what it would look like from the first video.